Once a week, we are blessed, dare I say, mm. to have acclaimed author and sex genius, Olivia, Mo I mean, Anna David, drop by to help make the world a better place. I love it when you finally give me the kudos I deserve. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you're making, making the world a better place by making them be better at what they do. Yeah. Yes, which is doing it. You're welcome, guys. Now, our first question comes from a guy who can't seem to control himself. Uh-oh. I always cheat on my girlfriends, even when I'm happy with them and wouldn't want to be with anyone else in the world. It's like, I just can't help it. What's my deal? Am I really that messed up? I mean, it, it is sadly, perhaps, a, a common issue. I mean, the statistics, whatever, the studies on cheating, which are notoriously unreliable because people lie. Yeah. Cheaters lie. Yes. Uh, but, but the statistics are around 60% of men cheat on yeah. their wives or girlfriends. So, look, it's not... That sucks. It's not great news, but, um, but I think that the thing is, ask yourself what is going on. I mean, sometimes this is where, like, outside help, a therapist could potentially help... Uh, I hope Anna's excited to talk about this right I'm here. I'm excited. It is right I'm here. Excited. Besides being our esteemed consultant, <laughs> you can now add novelist to the resume of Miss Anna David. This is a party girl. Kevin posed for that picture right That there, is my silhouette, by the way. And I did that for spec. So if you sell a couple <laughs> copies, a little kickback First would be nice. First check is going to you, Kevin. Thank you, yeah, you, Now, what's the story of this this book? Okay, so this book is out today, and I'm very, very excited excited. Congratulations. about it. And it's about a wild and crazy girl who gets a job documenting her wild and crazy mm -hmm. life for a magazine right when she gets sober. So she has to create a persona based on who she used to be, and then mm -hmm. the whole thing comes back. They're calling it the war and peace of books about whores. Anna David's new novel is about a journalist covering the L.A. social scene while writing a feature about a high-class call girl. The presumptuously named novel is called Bought. Mm. And since we have the delightful and delicious Anna in studio, let's spend a few minutes asking her all about all things hookers, because she knows skanks like I know shanks. It's true, I'll stab you for $3. <laughs> First off, this book is about a high-class call girl. Does any woman in the business refer to themselves as a low-class call girl? Well, the girl that you introduced me to, she oh. said, I'm Greg's date, a low-class call girl. Explain what this book's about. Okay, you thank you. That's a great first question. Um, about three or four years ago, I did this investigation on high-class hookers in Hollywood. I did the same, by the way, but not for a magazine. <laughs> <laughs> I studied your research by following you around. And, um, and and I basically found out about all these girls that are their playmates, their like, penthouse pets, and their porn stars, mm -hmm. and they are making bank mm -hmm. because men will pay a lot of money to have sex with them. Like, and <laughs> Wait a second, you're telling me that there are men out there that will pay money know, to I have know, sex Greg, with hot women? I do not mean oh, to God. shatter your illusions of the world. <laughs> Anna is a journalist, she is a TV personality, she's a columnist, and a self-declared sex whisperer. We're going to be talking to her about her brand new book, Falling for Me, which is causing all kinds of controversy. How I hung curtains, learned to cook, traveled to Seville, and fell in love. I think that, honestly, like, I think the question, I, you're, when people go, you're so great, how could you be single, is the most illogical question the in the world. It's the most illogical question. Because it's like, as if the reason people are single is that they can't find anybody yes. to date. And I think that that's part of the problem you know we live in a society that says there's something wrong with you if yes. you are not married at a certain age even though we're so evolved and things have changed so right. much you know and so just even that question the is question part is of the problem. flawed on so many levels wow. i speak of anna david's 14th memoir <laughs> falling for me how i hung curtains learned to cook traveled to seville and fell in love I love you, Anna, but I'm a little memoir out at this point. I know <laughs> counting is not, math is not your strong suit. I've written two novels. That is actually different than a memoir, a memoir. We don't know the difference. Joining me now is Anna David. She's the executive director of TheFix.com. She herself, recovering addict. Anna, let's talk about how shocking it is or is not to hear that an addiction counselor relapsed and then was involved in such a horrific accident. Well, it's, it's a horrible, horrible st story, and Yolanda and Marco, I'm so, so sorry. It's, uh, anecdotally, I, I would say I do, you do not hear of addiction counselors relapsing all that often. The accident itself is so tragic that that, that, that is more shocking, but 
you know, a great many sober people work as addiction counselors. Statistics say it's about 50% of the people that work there, and relapse is a part of the disease. The problem as I see it isn't that we label people. It's that we do it in this really closed-minded way. If we could use a label as a jumping off point and not a conclusion, I believe it could be one of our greatest tools for open-mindedness. Consider this. When students are labeled smart or motivated, like all the students here, I'm sure, studies show it changes the rest of their lives. But that's not the only good that labels do. Labels, they give us a tribe. You know, we live in a very fractured society, and we are all looking for a tribe. So it doesn't matter what that label is, it gives us the solidarity of a group of like-minded individuals. Thanks for being with us today. Congratulations, by the way, on your book, Make Your Mess Thank Your you. Memoir. Tell us what inspired this book and how it obviously hits home right now during these times. Well, I'll tell you, I used to only read memoirs and I would come away with a lot of knowledge about the author. Then I started only reading business books and I would come away with a lot of like takeaways, but I would be kind of bored. So I thought, what if you could combine both, make it 10 chapters of memoir, five chapters of here's how you write your own memoir. And I coined the term bizwar. And the reason it's so important now is not only do a lot of us have more free time than ever, but writing is the most crucial aspect of healing for me.